So, um, Heart Cranes the Bridge, a 1930 poem. But we are not doing the entire poem of course, but only the section or segment on the Brooklyn Bridge. It is a poem um, which he intended to write as an American epic. 1930, now um, 1930 has its own value. Within the schematic of modernist literature, we have been talking about several works of literature who are, that were published uh, during this period, the second half or second decade um, of uh, the 20th century and um, particularly think of uh, the sun also rises that we have already done and also we have been referring to, uh, to the great Gatsby also in 1925. So, this is an addition to that corpora of the so called modernism. Yeah, so, this is a in continuation with the modernist movement in literature. So, you should remember that uh, um, not just in America, but also in Europe there were several writers who were experimenting with uh, um, particularly with uh, different kinds of styles, techniques and also themes. James Joyce, you have heard of James Joyce, you have heard of uh, people like Virginia Woolf and also they were the modernists. Yeah. So, they uh, also Kafka. So, these are the modernists uh, and uh, uh, the bridge is in uh, is a very uh, uh, important addition to the entire corpus of modernist literature and it, it, uh, it occupies a very important part in American canon. Now, um, what is this bridge? We are talking about uh, the uh, references to Brooklyn Bridge, which was completed in 1883. It took almost uh, one and a half decades for completion and uh, there are several important features associated uh, with Brooklyn Bridge. I am sure you will find the history of Brooklyn Bridge somewhere um, if you do enough uh, reading on the um, on the history of this uh, of this uh, very extremely significant monument it's almost like a national monument of america now uh, before we start talking about what is the significance of um, brooklyn bridge and hart crane's poem um, let us understand what is modernist poetry what we what do we understand by modernism and particularly modernist poetry. Now, uh, modernist poetry if you remember is known for its symbolism. You have been doing lot of sim, uh, modernist poetry, think of Pound, think of Eliot. Yeah? So, those are the modernists. So, uh, along with that uh, we will also talk about other uh, important modernist poet as well, but uh, immediately you can think of T. S. Eliot and Ezra Pound. So, known for symbolism and also uh, known for experimentation and innovation with language. The poet has experimented a lot with the language. It is very obscure. Modernism, one of the defining features of modernism is its obscurity. Yeah, so, obscurism of modernist poetry, obscurity of thought and of course, uh, uh, is written in free verse. So, total rejection of the traditional concept of meter. This is something that has been going on even in Eliot and Pound you will find rejection of the conventional meter and Hart Crane continues the tradition. Now, um, some of the important themes or recurring themes of modernist poetry are like war, erosion of humanity and or humanitarian considerations. You have read T. S. Eliot's The Wasteland and you will know that how he talks about disintegration of moral, spiritual and moral condition of uh, um, the western civilization. 
Yeah, so that is what he talks about and then um, some of the people who were writing in the same style were apart from Eliot and Pound you had uh, W. H. Auden, Spender, Stephen Spender and also W. B. Yeats. Okay, so, all these people belong to the tradition of modernist poetry. Now, um, The Bridge was first published as we were talking about in 1930 and uh, it screens first and only attempt at a long poem, other, all other poems were like short lyrics. It has a, uh, a status as either an epic or a series of uh, um, lyrical poems. Now, uh, it is a series of lyrical poems and it has uh, what Crane aspired to do was to write an American epic of national uh, of epic proportion of national importance. Yeah. It has been contested. Now, Hart Crane is considered a great poet by several people and we will talk about that also critics reception to Hart Crane, but there are also if you look up the net you will find that his position uh, um, is not really as secure as the greatest of American poets. For example, you have done, um, you are a, a, at least aware of people like uh, Walt Whitman um, or Emily Dickinson. So, these are unchallenged, but in Hart Crane's uh, case always uh, his status always remains a contentious issue. Okay. Is he a great poet or not? Okay. But the poem definitely is worth consideration and uh, many people tend to read it as a, a kind of hybrid indicative of something called the modernist epic. Now, it is a contradictory term, epic has to be the traditional, you know Milton has written an epic, you know which what I am talking about, Iliad and Odyssey are epics those are epics, but what is a modern, what is a modernist epic. Now, um, this is what we are going to think about and Hart Crane who lived between 1899 and 1932, he was born in Ohio and uh, he shifted to New York. He lived for quite a while in the Brooklyn region. So, um, interestingly he, he lived in an apartment which over uh, looked the bridge okay. and uh, we know when was the bridge completed? 18? 18? 1883. Yeah. So, uh, by the time he was at the peak of his powers, creative powers, the bridge was almost was there okay. and he was, but it was a new structure. Something which was quite a novelty for America for the American people. So, uh, he was fascinated by the technology and also by because see we are talking about modernism and we the implicit symbols in various things day to day objects. So, he would look at the bridge from the uh, his window and uh, a key feature now uh, hard cranes homosexuality which uh, um, is a fact, but which he could not reveal of course, we are talking about the early 30s and he died in uh, I am we are talking about early 1930s and he died in 1932. Um, uh, so, um, he was a homosexual, but he could not come out in the open about it. So, um, there was a lot of tension and conflict within him. Critics have tried to read those kinds of connotations in his poetry also, especially in the bridge. He was away, he was in Mexico on a fellowship. He won the Guggenheim fellowship and he was uh, doing some kind of a project research, uh, something or related to creative writing and all and he was working, uh, he was doing some you know um, writing work in uh, Mexico and while returning from Mexico to the uh, United States something is snapped inside him because see he felt that he has been leading a life uh, of uh, duplicity for a very long time and he was unable to come to terms with that kind of life. So, he, so he just threw himself overboard 
Okay, so he died. He committed suicide. Okay, while he was on his way back to America from Mexico. So that's the tragic end of Hard Crane. Now uh, this is the first edition of the bridge, and you can look at the beautiful bridge, which is now such an iconic symbol of America. Crane labels uh, to Brooklyn Bridge a prelude. See, the poem is called The Bridge, but we are particularly looking at to Brooklyn Bridge, which is a short lyric from the bigger no, a poem, The Bridge. So, to Brooklyn, to Brooklyn Bridge and he called it a proem, which is interesting. What is it? It is a prologue plus poem. So, he referred to Brooklyn Bridge as a proem which gives you an entry point to the major themes of the bridge. The intention was to create an epic that captures the myth of American experience. Now, that is a tall ambition to <laughs> capture the myth of American express, uh, experience. Very soon we will do what is myth and we will also talk about American experience, but American experience, America being such a wi wide and varied land. It, it has to be extremely wide and varied and he uh, aspired to capture that experience in this epic. Now, um, I keep referring to Malcolm Bradbury who is a, um, an authority on modernism and uh, modern, uh, Malcolm Bradbury says that if modernism means the ruffling of the hard naturalistic surface by a state of multiplicity of consciousness, then Walter Pater that is the Renaissance, that is the uh, um, uh, English poet and aesthetes, aesthet uh, in the 1870s in England and other thinkers in Europe were talking of quickened multiplied consciousness. So, heightened sense of multiplicity of consciousness that is how we have to understand modernism, the sense of modernism and when we apply all this to heart crane you will understand that there is a sense of multiplicity of consciousness. So, his, his uh, thought processes are not just unidirectional or centered on a single focus theme, there is a sense of underlying sense of multiplicity of consciousness. Therefore, it is so difficult to understand. I do not know if you have even attempted to read it, you try to read the poem, you will find that it is very difficult to understand what he is trying to say. Okay. Um, we are aware that in modernist poetry and I am leading you towards uh, Hart Crane's consciousness. Um, so, we know that urban landscapes are often seen as harsh and fractured uh, that are discordant and at odds with nature that is your modernist poetry. Again I will give you example how Eliot has portrayed London in the wasteland 1922 and uh, Dylan Thomas uh, has also pro, uh, portrayed London in very negative terms okay, in a refusal to mourn the death by fire. So, these are our the uh, modernist poet who poets who have had a very you know the desire was to return to the rural the pastoral yes, but not in hard crane so this is where he differs so Eliot and Dylan Thomas people like them may bemoan the loss of innocence and may bemoan the loss of um, pastorality okay and um, destruction of the rural landscape and natural la landscape, but in Hart Crane, urban and industrialization is celebrated. Th this is here, this is the point where he differs radically from people like Eliot. For Eliot, there is no positive element to be found in uh, London, there is moral and spiritual disintegration all over. So, he is very derisive of progress, of that kind of progress, okay, but not hard crane. In Eliot's hands, the bridge would have turned out to be a very different kind of a poem, but here he celebrates the construction of this. And I mean, when we talk, let us even look at the title, the bridge. 
what does when you uh, when you hear a word like the bridge what does it connote what does it suggest connecting yes connect i know connectivity he tries to bring in lots of elements of connectivity connecting traditional with the modern okay we connecting uh, uh, straight people the so called straight people with uh, homosexuals so the idea of inclusivity and connectivity remains okay but then you have to go through the entire poem and not just look at one single lyric yeah so um, uh, the idea is that the majestic arcs of the bridge the mirror the arc so this is how the he refers to the seagull's wings at the beginning of the poem and uh, its cables and as you know the construction of the structure of uh, brooklyn bridge it is made of suspension and wires and cables and all that so they are the coiring for him they are the coiring strings of a great harp there is a symphony implicit in the bridge crane also shows uh, us the bridge as an altar a man made wonder whose uh, cover ship lends a myth to god and this is what he says that it is a kind of a modern miracle is an altar to god it's almost like a prayer okay this is the way he saw the bridge now again we have to understand that he celebrates the disasters as well as the achievements of modern urban life we see uh, in the poem he talks about bold office workers in plummeting elevators so not on the bridge but in office offices the various offices eliot talks about the same thing okay eliot also has similar concerns that people are living in an in a state of limbo and uh, on we bored people people are uh, the disconnect people have with other people so this is what he talks about uh, crane also refers to boredom modern day mo boredom a uh, monotonous of life he also talks about cinema audiences enthralled but however unsatisfied by the panoramic slates of the silver screen so this is also one of the uh, things that he mentions in the opening lines and then he also talks about a suicide about of a person who leaps from the parapets of the bridge with his shrill shirt ballooning so all these images are there in the poem so we are talking about the bored office workers we are talking so work doesn't excite people so entertainment as symbol or as given to us by cinema that doesn't excite people because cinema is also becoming a monotonous and also um, suicide the bridge gives place or uh, some kind of a space to people not just for progress but also for destruction so he the it's the view is extremely panoramic now uh, some of the greatest modernist of all times and i'm just repeating something that i'm sure all of you know but i want you to anyway look at these names take a moment look at these names i am very sure you are aware and at least familiar you have a nodding familiarity with all these people so you have to situate hart crane within this tradition they were the, they were also the people who were writing uh, various kinds of genres there was brecht who was doing drama there was a, there are people like uh, hilda do little known for imagist poetry then you have people like uh, um, dh lawrence he is a modernist novelist who experimented a lot with the stream of consciousness as well as his, as well as the themes so we are talk we are situating hard crane within this tradition of modernism so thomas mann marcel pro franz kafka these are all europeans um, rilke poems i am sure you are aware of ezra pound william faulkner and steven malame he is who is an esthet you know w b yeats arthur rembo strindberg the playwright pirandello's work wallace stevens eugene o'neil brecht 
William Carlos Williams, he is an American poet, Amy Lovell, Hilda Doolittle, Wallace Stevens, Marianne Moore is also an imagist, a modernist play, um, poet, E. E. Cummings, perhaps you are a familiar with E. E. Cummings, who would always write in lower caps. Okay, and then of course, you have people like Auden and Eliot and Stein and then also our, our very own Hemingway, people like Hemingway and Fitzgerald. So, writers, authors of the lost generation, so they are all, they belong to the tradition of modernism and of course, James Joyce in Ireland and Virginia Woolf in England. So, these and this is the time when Hart Crane is also writing. So, if you want to situate him, if you want to compare him with the rest of the other great writers, yeah, I think it's, there is a great study, you can compare him to some of his con great contem contemporaries like these ones, these people. Now, uh, the bridge comprises 15 lyric poems of varying lens and scope. Uh, the poem that we are interested in is a, a short lyrical ode and uh, idea is to give an, uh, it, it serves as an introduction to the larger poem, the bridge and uh, also an introduction to New York's or New York City's urban landscape, which remains a dominant presence throughout the work and he is very affectionate. He has great um, sympathy for the urban predicament, unlike the Eliots of the world. Now, um, as we know in modernism, this is something that you already know, the salient features of modernism. Um, we talk about the absence of any higher authority, breakdown of a central, uh, central figure, privileging of the individual over wider society. So, here I want you to consider how the poet looks at looks at this great structure and privileges a common man over everything else. Okay? So, over wider society. So, yes, New York is a great city, but then he talks about individuals, the common people also and celebrates them. The breakdown of social order and tradition, isolation of the individual, uh, of course, impossibility of genuine communication, these and metro as an example of the sterility of uh, spiritual conditions, all these things are there as part, it's, this is a, mo these are all modernist features. However, Crane differs in the sense that he has a um, lot of regards for development and uh, city, the uh, city scrapers, the city uh, scapes of New York and the urban situation. So, he is not the kind of person who is going to be dismissive of any kind of development. Okay. So, this is something that you have. So, yes, he is a modernist, but at the same time, he has his own take on modernism and industrialization and urbanization. Yeah. So, he lived for some time at a, and that is his address, 110 Columbia Heights, which was in Brooklyn and where, from where he had an excellent view of the bridge. So, he would often as I was telling you would look out of his window and look at the bridge while writing the poem. Um, a word or two about the bridge, it is the longest or at least at that point, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. It was uh, an engineering marvel, considered an engineering marvel. Many people would, uh, many poets, poets being such sensitive creatures, they would have dismissed it off like you know, it is ugly. To another eye, a pair of ugly, uh, eyes, it would have appeared as a very ugly structure, but not to him. Okay, for him, the uh, bridge provides a symbol for possibility of redeeming the modern world by the sheer power of its ability to connect people. This is the famous promenade where people walk all on the Brooklyn Bridge. This is something that you must have seen very frequently in films also. Now, um, as a work of canon, I was telling you that uh, the bridge um, has uh, a very or even had a very mixed response when it was first uh, published. But now, over the years, people have uh, revisited uh, the poem and most importantly, someone called Harold Bloom, who I am sure you are aware of. He is also the uh, author of a seminal book called The Western Canon 
I strongly rec recommend that if you are not familiar with it, please he has done lot of work on Shakespeare also, but that is another different matter. But the western canon if you want to know if you are in really deep into literature, then you should you must go through the western canon. And Harold Bloom places Crane in his pantheon of the best modernist American poets of the 20th century. He looks at the bridge as uh, Crane's most significant achievement almost on par with the wasteland. This I am quoting Crane and he says the bridge is symphonic in including all the strands and this is the this is what uh, when we talk about American epic capturing the mythical American experience. So, it uh, um, through its various poems, he tries to capture the American experience and what, what uh, the major themes being Columbus and its discovery of America, conquest of water la and land, Pocahontas situation. So, also the natives, Native Americans, the subways, the office and according to Crane, the bridge in becoming a ship, a world, a woman, a tremendous harp as it does finally seem to really have a career. Bridge is a character by itself, it is everything to everyone. It is a beautiful woman, it is a symphony, it is a microcosm of the entire world. So, this is bridge, the bridge from yet another angle. How many dogs chilled from his rippling rest, the seagulls wings shouted at the hill, shedding white rings of tumult, building high in the chain bay waters of the body. Then we can pirate the curve, forsake our eyes, as apparitional as sails that cross some page of figures to be filed away, till elevators drop us from our way. So this is the bridge and th read this, carry on. I think of cinemas, panoramic slides, with multitudes bent towards some flashing scene, never disclosed, but hasten to again, foretold to other eyes on the same screen, and we, across the harbour, silver paced, as though the sun took step of the yet left some motion ever unspent in thy strife, implicitly thy freedom stay thee. Yeah. Out of some subway scuffling cell or loft, a bedlamite speeds to the parapets, tilting their momentary, shrill shirt ballooning. A jest falls from the speechless cannon. Down wall from garden into street, moon peaks, a repeat of the skies as tiny. All afternoon, the cloud flown then its turn, that cables beneath the North Atlantic still. And obscure as a heaven of Jews, thy quarter. Accolade thou dost bestow of anonymity, time cannot place. Vibrant relief and pardon thou dost show. O harp and altar, fury fused, how to mere toil align thy coiling strings. Terrific threshold of the prophet's pledge, prayer of Pariah and the lover's cry. Again, the traffic lights that skim thy swift, unfractioned beam, the immaculate sigh of stars, leading thy heart, condense eternity. And we have seen night lifting in thine arms. Under thy shadow, by the peers I waited, only in darkness is thy shadow clear. The city's fiery parcels, all undone, already snow, submerges an iron ear. O oh, sleepless as the river under thee, Haunting the sea, the prairie's gleaming sword, unto us glorious sometimes sweet, descend and a precursion land of it to God. The only way, the only approach is that do not try to find explanation for each and every line. It is a very, very, uh, it is a poem that is a, an individual response to a great structure. Okay. And what, yeah, so these words, every word has something else, um, it does not mean what it seems to be. Okay. He is not using the word suicide or death at all. So, you have to just understand the connotations of these. Yeah, you have done a lot of semiotics in this course and 
in other courses also. So, you should understand the denotation, the connotation. So, every word has a meaning which is not really the direct meaning, the surface meaning, it is something else, it, it goes deeper into it. Very modern is very obscure and I think it is, he has done it very intentionally, okay, he does not want. I mean there is a, a lover's cry, a pariah on the bridge, who could it be? A marginal, a marginalized person in the city, perhaps a dispossessed, okay, perhaps an immigrant, perhaps even a homosexual like crane himself, which is a pariah, someone who is ostracized, a lover's cry, someone who wants to be embraced, okay, but okay, he is not going to tell you all these things at you know in a very direct way. Even even uh, Eliot's the wasteland is much more accessible. Uh, as compared to this one. The last stanza is very similar to uh, an ode to the West Wind. Yes. So there very I die, I fall. Yes. Yeah. So here is the bridge. Yes. As we all know that uh, um, <coughs> it is not a bridge, it is not just a bridge and not just a, a scientific or architectural marvel, but it is also a part of a very uh, significant and it has become a very significant cultural phenomenon, especially uh, for uh, the Americans. So, there is this book by David uh, McCullough, it is called The Great Bridge, which uh, looks at uh, the uh, epic story of the construction of the bridge. Okay, so, it is also an important book and then uh, we, as we know, um, all right. This is uh, Arthur Miller's 1956 play, A View from the Bridge, something that you are already familiar with. Uh, the bridge has uh, found a place in several important films that have been culturally uh, very significant and Annie Hall 1977 film being one of the, that. Once upon a time in America, here again you see glimpses of the bridge and very significantly look at it the way uh, on the poster of the film, it is an iconic, it has an iconic kind of a presence here. So, Sergio Leone is once upon a time in America, which foregrounds the bridge. Um, the Broken Tower is Crane's uh, last published work and it is a film by James Franco. Okay, it is a very James Franco kind of avant-garde film. Uh, James Franco, if you know, he is not just a very popular actor and he has acted in all these um, uh, very commercial films like this Spider-Man series of course, but uh, he is at the same time he experiments a lot with his image and the kind of works that he does. So, um, you know that he has played the role of uh, uh, a bisexual and homosexual in three films. One is Howl, uh, where he played the poet Allen Ginsberg, Ginsberg and also Milk and then this is Broken Tower based on Crane's last poem where he plays Hard Crane himself. Uh, as I was telling you, you know it is useless to attempt to have a word by way interpretation of the poem, but I just wanted to give you a very holistic picture of the cultural significance of this poem, okay, why, why it is important, why is it a part of the canon. Okay, and uh, uh, One important thing is of course that uh, uh, it is the bridge itself is of such monumental importance to uh, Americans and the country. So, therefore, a poem about the bridge has to be extremely significant and of course, today it is a part of the canon. It is a unique poem, I mean you do not find poems written over about uh, an architectural marvel like this, I mean this is not uh, let us say um, our uh, um, some a building that has been dedicated to lovers, okay. we talk about the Taj Mahal which is a symbol of love. Okay. This is there is no such romantic story connected to the bridge, okay. it was a bridge that is it nothing more nothing less, but then if the very fact that it has inspired something so uh, profound in a uh, poet and also um, in films and also in several plays that explains the significance of the structure 
itself. All right then. Thank you very much.